Pizza time! Alright, today we are going to be playing Mega Man X1. And just, oh, listen to this music. Look at that title screen. This, this is a great game. Mm. Just, just fucking awesome. Alright, so let's get started. So, this is the first game in the Mega Man X series. Duh. So, it's kind of probably a good idea to talk a little bit about uh, what they were going for in this. I mean, most people know about Mega Man, the original series, the happy jolly blue dude from the Nintendo Entertainment System who goes around, kills the bad guys, steals their powers, yada yada yada. But in this one, series creator K uh, Keiji Ifune, Ifune, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, he wanted to go for like a darker, uh, grittier tone, basically. And he said something like he wanted to reinvent Mega Man. Like he wanted to completely, you know, change things up, but also not stray from the core gameplay that made the series fun and popular in the first place. So what he did is he went to the t his team and he wanted to you know, make this game awesome. And he gave them a lot of freedom to try and reinvent this game and reinvent the uh, franchise. And so Mega Man X was the fruit of that labor, and I honestly think that it was a good decision. I think going darker and still staying, staying in the same universe, but also uh, being different, you know, but still being uh, true to the roots of the original, it was a good way to go. And it got me interested because this was my first Mega Man game ever. I'm a huge fan of Mega Man, you know, X, Legends, all that good stuff. And I just think that this is probably the best of all the 2D games. Period. Um, I loved, you know, X3, and I liked X4. Not huge fans of, like, X5 and 6. I mean, I guess X2 was okay. X7 was sort of when, <laughs> when the wheels completely fell off for me. I just said screw it after that point. So, anyways, this is X1. Ugh. Damn it. And X1 is a badass game. Love it. And I missed an opportunity there. I usually jack one of those dudes' cars and just ride it, but eh, whatever. It's not important. It's cool, but it's not important. I think it's still this guy's, though. Oh, yeah, here we go. Whoop. Oh, man, I messed up my ride. Bullshit. Alright, the ominous spaceship up there, spaceship, airship, whatever. Drops this guy. This is Vile. Vile is a maverick. And mavericks are evil robots that are under the control of Sigma. And I don't really know if it's explained in the intro because I usually always skip it. But uh, they are evil robots who are trying to take over the world. And uh, Sigma is their leader. You worth this piece of scrap metal. Did you think you could defeat me? Get ready for bad voices, people. Just, just saying. Holy shit. Who could this? Oh my god, that dude is so cool. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Holy shit. That, my friends, is Zero, and he is the coolest motherfucker in this entire series. I guess I'm not powerful enough to defeat him. Hmm. X. You shouldn't expect to defeat him. He's designed to be a war machine. Remember, you have not reached full power yet. If you use all of the abilities you were designed with, you should become stronger. You may even become as powerful as I am. I'll scout ahead and collect as much information on Sigma's fortress as I can. I'll meet up with you when you get there. See you later. X, I know you can do it. Oh man. Well, Zero thinks I can do it then. <laughs> Fuck, I know I can. Alright, so that was the intro stage. And I think that's a great way to introduce players to this game. I mean, it gets you into the mood of the game. It starts off at night, it's dark. You know, you get your ass kicked. And you gotta somehow become strong enough to defeat Sigma, and you know, because he's a problem. But anyways, here's the infamous uh, 
just something that's in every Mega Man, well, almost every Mega Man game, the infamous stage select screen. And this one's a little different, though. And I don't think, I don't think many others did this. It's basically the thing like, okay, yeah, you can always check out, you know, the bosses and stuff, but this one shows like a little preview of each stage, which is really cool. And this one also has something different, though. It has map, which shows you where all the guys are located, and I just love that. I think it's just so freaking cool. And it also has spec, which shows you a little bit about each uh, boss, like their height, weight, attacks, that kind of stuff. And I just think that's really, really cool. But I usually stick with map, because I just that map looks really cool. I don't know, even to this day, I think that's pretty freaking sweet. But anyways, the first one we're going to go with is Chill Penguin. Chill Penguin is super easy to beat, and it gets our first major ability. One of Zero's abilities, actually, the dash. And that is a key... That is a key ability throughout every single X game. Every single X game has it. I think in, uh, was it, it maybe it was two or three, they introduced uh, air dashing. And um, that became, you know, important as well. And uh, I kind of preferred just the old tried and true regular dashing. But, you know, air dashing is not bad. I think it's it serves its purposes in, uh, in some of the games. And um, this level is one of my favorites just because of the music and the stage select screen has great music but the first level has great music this stage has great music I honestly can't think of a single stage that doesn't have good music but more importantly this is also an ice stage I love ice stages ice stages snow levels I don't know anyone who doesn't like them I know people who hate certain types of levels like personally I can't stand water levels I mean there's very few exceptions none of which I can think of right now because I just hate water levels but in any case, ice and snow levels pretty much universally loved. Just loved by most people. And here is one of our first, actually the very first, capsule that we're going to encounter in the game with Dr. Light. So you've come. X, I get... Wait a minute. What was it? Oh, okay, okay. I think I'm going to do his Mega Man 8 voice. I think that'll, that'll be a treat. X... I gave you the ability to choose your own path in life. And I hope that you would choose that the world would allow you to choose a peaceful one. But now it's... I can't do it. But now it seems that you are destined to fight. For those of you that uh, don't know, that really was how his voice sounded in uh, Mega Man 8. You should check it out. But I thought the world might need a new champion. I have hidden capsules like this one. If you find and use them, you'll be able to increase your powers. Beyond anything the world has ever known. Step into this capsule. And receive an acceleration system to boost your speed. Good luck, X. Good luck, X. But yeah, no, seriously, Mega Man 8. Horrid dubbing. Horrid. Uh, I just remember playing that back on the PlayStation and... Ugh, it was pretty damn cringeworthy. I mean, I know some of the voices I do are cringeworthy sometimes, but no, this this was pretty fucking bad. Um, hilarious though. It's kind of one of those so bad it's good things, like Troll Two or The Room. Just, you know, universally hilarious to laugh at for its awfulness. Um, kind of like Mega Man X Seven, but I'll hopefully never get to that. All right, now this is something new to the series. Ride armor. This stuff is awesome. Uh, it's in a few different stages, and in this one, I think the only one you can get is just the standard sort of uh, one with the giant robot arm. But later on in the X2, I'm pretty sure, in X3, you get like ones with spike arms, and ones that shoot rockets, and uh, ones that can go underwater, and all that kind of cool shit. So it's, it's pretty damn awesome. Uh, definitely really a good addition to the series. I'm surprised it never had anything like that in the original, and if they did, I certainly don't remember it. So this is going to be our first boss encounter of the game, but we can actually win. Vile doesn't count. Yeah, dude, f yeah, fuck off. No, Vile doesn't count. You can't beat him. I actually, when I was a kid, I convinced myself, and, and then of course there was always those kids at the, you know, at the playground at school, who were like, oh yeah, you can beat Vile if you fucking, you know, it takes like an hour, but you know, you can beat him. And of course, you know, I tried. I tried that shit, I tried beating him, you know, I tried the whole, uh, 
Oh yeah, you just gotta dump and dodge and all that. No, y you can't. It's impossible. After a while, he just starts shooting those things. The uh, the uh, stun ball things, and you're fucked. Because you're not supposed to be able to beat him. Now I do know that it, with a game genie, you can eventually shoot him to the point where he will start shooting those non-stop. You, you can lower his like quote-unquote health to that point, but still, he, he's still gonna stun you, and you're gonna get fucked, and you're done. Awesome. I just completely talked over that boss battle. I'm gonna try not to do that that often, but uh, it, it's such a brain dead easy boss to beat. So, anyways, next time, uh, I know that Spark Mandrill is weak to ice. I know that. Okay, but bear with me. I'm going to go to Storm Eagle, my favorite boss in this game, by the way, just because his stage is awesome, his music is awesome, all, all the music is awesome. But his, in particular, is just sweet. And it also gets our next capsule upgrade, which is a head uh, helmet upgrade, which is going to help us break blocks and shit like that. So, stay tuned.